Good morning, afternoon. You had a good time this morning. Great. Praise God. Okay, we're going to continue on this afternoon from where we were uh, last night and just look at a few things. What we've got to be careful with that we don't just get an information overload, you know. It takes too long. You just can't digest it all in the end. (laughs) That's the problem. So I'm going to give you some... I'm going to let you into a secret this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, some, but just simple and just to we just need to be able to just a few things I want to share with you praise God you know one of the greatest problems we have with knowing God is the incompatibility between him and us you know, and uh, what is God really like, you know? Well, it says in Genesis one twenty seven, we were created in his likeness, in his image. Okay? God is like you. The only difference is, he's perfect. <laughs> you know, he... Uh, has a mind, a will, motion, physical appearance, character. You know, a person is known generally by their character, of what kind of person they are, and their ability. You know? We have that in the fruit of the Spirit, the character, and through the anointing and the anointing and various giftings, we have ability. And... Uh, in John chapter 14, 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be happy. That, that's all we need. Show us the Father and that will suffice us. And Jesus said unto him, have, you been so long, have I been so long time with you and you have not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. So why do you say, show us the Father? Jesus the image of the Father. When it comes to ability, however, it's something else. You cannot describe the ability of God it's beyond description. It's beyond understanding and it's beyond description. You know, who is God? God is love, sums up his nature. His ability? Well, God is light. That's his power. But you cannot really describe the greatness the ability of God. And what we need to understand about God, that the flow of his light or power is governed by his nature. And we need to, that needs to be burned into us. You know, the Pentecostal movements in the past could manifest power via the gifts of the Spirit without a compatibility of character. But this is changing. That, that, the requirements are changing for us. Lord Jesus came to me on the 15th of June this year and said this to me. He said, the next level of power requires a higher level of love. And he said, in times past I winked. He used that word winked. At man's failings, but now I require more. Tell my people I will no longer look the other way, but I require holiness and righteousness. Only then will my power be released in greater measure. And when he said that to me, the power of God came over me, and it took me about five hours to recover from it. There was such a strength in what he said, such a, I really mean this kind of thing. I really do mean it. He spoke that. It took me a long time to recover from that. And he gave me a scripture, Acts 17, 30. And in the, and the times of this, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at. 
But now, he commands all men to repent. See, the reason for this is to prepare us for a far greater manifestation, you know, of his presence. Condition us for a manifestation of his presence. Now, we said last night, you know, David said in Psalm 16 and verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me. That's repeated. It's, re it's requoted in the book of Acts. So it's both in the Old and the New Testament. I have set the Lord always before me. Okay. 2 Corinthians 3, 8, 18. But we all with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. From glory to glory. That is an incredible scripture. And we read it so blasé. If we behold, we all, with an open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord, doesn't say we may be changed. It says you are changed into the same image from one level of glory to another. And uh, even as by the Spirit of God. It's not an if, it's not a maybe. You say, if you do this, something's going to start to happen to you. And you'll go from one level of glory in changing. You know, and it says we, we changed into the same image. I want to talk to you today about how that comes about. And give you some keys on that. Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. And again in Hebrews eleven twenty seven, by faith Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He endured as seeing him, who is invisible. Why is it so important to look to the Lord, look at the Lord, to see the Lord? Now we've been trying to establish that concept, that principle. What you focus on, you'll connect with, and impartation will take place. You know, Psalm 115, verse 8, speaking about idolatry, says, They that make them become like unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. So you take on the image. That's Psalm 115, 8. It's also repeated in Psalm 135, 8. Yeah. Very important reality, this. Very, very important. You know, the natural process of conception and birth mirrors the spiritual. And uh, in the process of conception, there is an impartation. A substance that has life is passed on. Then something forms out of that. And something is born within you. Now, that process is the same in the spiritual realm. Conception takes place through impartation. And out of that impartation, something will come to birth, either negative or positive, bad or good, good or evil. It will come to birth in that person's life. Now, we've looked at that. Give me, uh, let me give you an example. I dealt with a guy in our church and, um, no, a number of years ago. Brought up in a Christian home, Christian family. Christian parents, you know, came to... Sunday school, came all the way through, grew, grew into a teenager, and then he was into his 20s. And he started to become extremely violent. Arrogant, violent, disruptive. Even disrupting the service, you know, when I was speaking. And that, in the end, you know, after tolerating it for a while, <laughs> disrupting the service, I challenged the demon publicly. I just had enough. I was in the middle of preaching and he started to dis disrupt again. So I challenged this. And, um, very interesting. <laughs> if you're going to challenge something, you better be up to it, you know. <laughs> he spoke back to me in pure German, a language he had never learned. I mean, pure German. It took me back. And I knew it wasn't nice by the tone. Um, <laughs> you know. and 
So I commanded, I, and obviously I knew it was, a, it was a spirit. I commanded him to speak in English, this, this demon. And so he began to sp come across speaking in English, challenging my authority. Okay? So I commanded to tell me who he was. Who was his spirit? How dare you interrupt the house of the Lord? And I was getting, not arrogant, but I was getting a bit stroppy. And... Um, <laughs> He got this look on his face, this demon says, I was one of the 6,000 demons that inhabited Adolf Hitler. Oh, you've got to be joking. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I thought my, straight away my mind went, how many more are in there? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I said, how did you get in? He cut a long story short. He had a poster in his bedroom of Adolf Hitler, which he admired, and he had joined a neo-Nazi organization. Even his parents didn't know this. He was about 27 at the time. And he continued to focus on this poster, caused him to conceive his demonic power into his life. He started to change physically. He started to dress differently started to dress like the, you know, the Gestapo type of thing. And uh, so they came, you know, it was, it was showdown time. And uh, this guy stepped out into the aisle and he ran down the aisle towards me. I felt the Lord say, don't give ground. So I just stood like this. He came right up, skidded to a stop. <laughs> and fell backwards. <laughs> and these demons started, there's this just more than one demon, but more than six thousand, but these demons started to come out of him. Eventually, about 20 minutes later, he was free. It's interesting, he couldn't speak German anymore. He spoke, spoke fluent German the first time. And um, his clothing changed, his spirits were gone. He conceived by his focus. You know, there's an interesting scripture in Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, It should come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, in the end times, that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all that are clothed with strange clothing. Have you ever read that scripture before? Very interesting scripture. Quite often, you know, the fashion trends of today mirror a demonic entity. And what your focus is upon, you foc if your focus is upon a particular, you know, singer, idol, actor, whatever, and you begin to dress like them, you know? What's going on? I don't know about the, the culture out here among the young people so much as back home, but you, you're aware of the gothic look. Okay, they, they have these girls, black clothing, jet black hair, black lipstick, very white face, very white skin, a kind of gothic look. Mirrors a, a spirit of, a, a demon of death, a spirit of death. Very few live past the age of 30. And um, it's like they take on the clothing, they take on something which mirrors that demonic spirit. And I had a girl, she was about 23, and she came into our services. I found out later she was a pastor's daughter. But she was, you know, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle, she just looked gothic, head to toe. And um, she came in, came under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and of course that created fireworks. And... Uh, I had to take her aside the next day and, and talk to this girl. And she, she, when she started to manifest, these demons came up and said, we are children of the night. We are so arrogant. We are children of the night. Now I talked to this girl. She never, ever went out during the day, only at night. But my point, you see, this story, she got free. But the point of this story is that what you focus upon, 
you're going to end up looking like and clothing yourself with that kind of thing. And uh, you've got to be careful with fashion, you know. You can cl clothe yourself with another spirit. A very, very powerful demonic prince behind the fashion industry, you know. Be yourself. Don't be a clone to some designer who could be demon-possessed. You know what I mean? And, uh, oh, hallelujah. Don't let them dictate what you wear. I don't get into dangerous ground here. <laughs> Sanctify yourself. Look, God doesn't look dowdy. Okay? And there's nothing in heaven that's dowdy. I'm not talking, you know, uh, about that. You know, the early, some of the early holy Pentecostal groups, lipstick was a no-no. I mean... And if, if you put a rinse through your hair, that was it. You were on your way to hell. You've already got the ticket. You're on the way, you know. And then, we're not talking about things like that, all right? Um, First Peter 3, 3 says, Who, Who's adorning? Let it be that of the outward adorning. Not so much of the plaiting of the hair and the wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. Peter here is emphasizing the most important thing is what you look like on the inside. However, let me say this. What you are on the inside will reflect to the outside in the way you look and dress. Now that's a scary thought, isn't it? There will be exceptions to the case, obviously. Now, clothing yourself. You know? I've seen people in heaven and they look incredible, believe you me. They dress incredible. One time I, I, was, I had come back from India very, very sick and I had hepatitis A. And I'd been in, in India for a long time and got hepatitis and A. Not the bad one, but I was quite sick. And I was lying on my bed praying and praying. I had nothing else to do because I had to be bedridden, you know. And, to, and I was praying and suddenly I found myself walking through paradise if you've be, ever been into paradise it, it's an incredible place how it looks I mean it's just the outer courts of heaven but the grass the trees the birds the water everything's alive and it's not like light coming from the sun light's coming from everything everything is emanating light Flowers are emanating light and music. And, and, you know, it's an incredible place. And the architecture, oh, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's like nothing you've seen on earth. I mean, you look at the best architecture you've seen on earth, it's nothing compared to what it's like in heaven. Nothing. And um, I was walking through this, and I always enjoyed paradise. It was one. I mean, I mean, the throne room's good and all that, but I like paradise as well because I like nature. And I was walking through this and I stepped over a stream and I saw this person in the distance, quite a distance, walking on a, in another course. And I know we were, on a, we, go, we were going to intercept, you know. And as I got closer to there, I thought, I know that woman. Oh, really? And then as we got really close, I couldn't believe it. It was my mother. You know, my mother died when I was 17. And I looked at her. And, you know, I remember her around about the age of 48, 50. But now, I looked at her. <laughs> she looked about 30. Uh, she had blonde hair, made done in a certain way. And she just looked, I mean, incredible. Incredible. I mean... So there's hope, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, the best here is nothing compared to what's there. I tell you. And uh, I just couldn't take my eyes off her, you know? And, we talked for a while and she took me to show me some, some things she, she needed to show me. And, um, and then she said, you know, she's still, she's still your mother, you know. And, <laughs> uh, 
she said, you're not looking after yourself properly. You're not eating properly and you're not looking after I said, you know, just being in India, that you, you, you can't eat properly in India. Don't tell Sada that, word, but you can't <laughs> eat properly in India. <laughs> But you can't, you know, it's, and I was so sick. And, but she just, you're not eating properly, and she really gave me a good telling off, nicely. But, um, it, but the point, what was the, the point of this? <laughs> was that people look good in heaven. Everything looks good in heaven. You know? And... Uh, when we talk about, we're talking about fashion, that's right, we were talking about fashion, you know. There's nothing dowdy in heaven. You know, people look good. And uh, you should look good. Take care of yourself. Dress well. You know? What's on the inside will, will reflect on the outside of you. Can't stop it, whether you're aware of it or not. And... Uh, you know, clothing yourself, what you clothe yourself with, it says, and what you focus upon, you'll end up looking like. Slowly but surely, you'll take on the image of that thing. It'll come out, you can't stop it. And it's like it's the reflection of a demonic entity, if it's negative, you see. And it's like, Oh, yes. You know, my grandmother was um, Salvation Army we, uh, and on my mother's side and on my grandmother on my father's side was Pentecostal. And um, I was having this in-depth dis- discussion with my grandmother, you know. And we were talking about fashion, we were talking about makeup, we were talking about all of those things. And she looked at me, you know, and she said, Neville, even an old barn door looks better with a coat of paint. <laughs> and what she was saying was, you know, you can improve yourself a little, you know. And uh, she was that kind of character, you know. It was like, and uh, turn with me in your Bibles, we'd better get off this. Turn to <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. I want to open this up to you today because it's so important. Some of this I've never taught before today. Uh, just one aspect of this. So it's... Um, okay. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Uh, God, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not after the letter... But after the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives light. But if the manifest ministration of death, which was written and graven in stones, was glorious, that's in the Old Testament, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory that was upon him and his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not? the ministration of the Spirit be even greater in the new covenant, rather glorious. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, that's the old covenant, the Old Testament, much more doth the administration of righteousness exceed in glory. Okay. Verse 14. Talking about the Jewish people, but their minds were blinded until this day there remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in Christ? But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when it, when what? When the heart, the veil is still upon the heart. Nevertheless, when it, the heart shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So he's saying when your heart is turned to the Lord, something's going to happen to that veil. It shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that spirit. What spirit? 
Well, verse 6 says, Who hath made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. We are here to minister the Spirit of Christ to this world. The Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Or that can be translated, Where the Spirit is Lord, there is liberty. But we, with an open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay. It's looking contrast in the Old Testament against the New Testament. If they had glory in the New Test- Old Testament, and that was done away with, how much more should we have that glory in the New Covenant? Okay? And he's talking about the Jewish people. Even up till today, there is a veil, you see, when it comes to the New Covenant. And, and, and really understanding whom Moses typified and that they don't understand that but when it when the heart is turned to the Lord the veil shall be taken away when the heart see the mind the emotions the will is turned to the Lord the heart is turned to the Lord something's going to happen to that veil and it will be taken away now the Lord is that spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, uh, we faint not. What ministry is this? The ministry of the new covenant? Is he, he is that spirit, it says. To reveal, minister Jesus to this generation. How do we do that? We have to become like him. You see, we want, we want the world to see Jesus. Jesus wants the world to see him himself and them to see him in us. And although he's omnipresent and he does appear to people, God's purpose is that he is revealed to the world in you and through you. Now, beholding, beholding him. We talked yesterday about that Greek word, remember, dianoia, imagination, and the Hebrew word yetzer, to frame an image. So we've, we've covered that, beholding the Lord. Now it says, as in a glass. Okay. That glass, Hebrew, it can be tra- it's translated in the Greek, a mirror. Okay. Beholding the Lord, as in a mirror. You are changed. Beholding the Lord. What does that mean? Okay, let me ask you this question. What do you see when you look into a mirror? When you look into into a mirror, what do you see? You see yourself, right? You see your own reflection. Now, it's saying now, with an open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, you are changed into that same image. Now, what do you see when you look into a mirror? You see yourself. What we are told to see the Lord. What does that mean? When you look at the Lord with the eyes of the heart, you have to see yourself in that mirror being transformed into his image. Now, I want to explain this as a key, a real key. A real key. I don't want you to miss it, so we'll just go carefully over this. You know, you heard that song, Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen in Me. Okay. Say, Beholding the Lord in us will change you into the same image. As you look, as you look and you see the Lord. In that mirror, you see the Lord in you. Because you're looking at a mirror, that's you in the mirror. But you're not seeing you in the mirror anymore. You're replacing that. You're replacing that image. You're seeing the Lord reflecting back through you. Now this is going to take some just grasping a little. You see, what you focus upon you become like through impartation. Now where is Jesus now? In your heart. To activate that, 
to bring it into fullness, to activate the change of that in you to it so becomes more and more clear to those on the outside until it becomes an external thing. Beholding the Lord in that glass. You have to behold the Lord in you. See him as in you. You behold the Lord in that glass, there is your reflection. That reflection changes until you see the Lord in you. Now, have you got that? You go hold on to that for a moment. And uh, you're told to see the Lord when you're looking in that glass. See the Lord in you. This must be an act of faith. It has to be, you know, you have to believe. Everything we're talking about has to be an act of faith. You have to believe that what you see is real and that this thing is happening, otherwise nothing is activated. It requires faith. If you believe it, it's so. If you don't, it's not. Faith. Okay? If you would spend time coming before the Lord, it says here, with an open, that means simply no, no, um, nothing false, just who you are, coming before the Lord with an open face, beholding in that glass the glory of the Lord. If you begin to see Jesus in you, you see his face, you see his hands, you see the Lord be in you, and you hold that focus and worship the Lord, you're not worshipping you, but you're beholding Him, something radically begins to happen on the inside of you. Change. You begin to change into the image you see. Now, it takes time to get the hang of this. It's hard enough to see the Lord. Now we're talking about seeing the Lord in you. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. It takes a little a little time. So you've got to lay a good foundation. You've got to know that the Lord is in you, first of all. Okay? And you've got to know that the scripture is real and it means what it says. Beholding, as you come and look into that mirror, you see yourself, but that image of you must change into him. When that happens, the Lord is enlarged within you. The more you spend time doing that, seeing, seeing, as a man thinketh, so he is. Okay? If you see the Lord becoming clearer and clearer and expanded within you, so it is. And as that begins to happen, and he begins to be enlarged on the inside of you, he begins to fill your whole life. His glory is begins to increase within you that has an effect on your, your, your soul has an effect on your physical body because as you see it so it is and it starts to emanate out through your physical body and change begins to take place you start to become compatible now it's it's, it's something you've got to do now I've seen this you know it must be an act of faith, believing that it's happening or nothing changes. As you surrender and you come and worship before the Lord, beholding the Lord this way. You know, faith, it says, faith is a substance, right? It's not just an abstract thing. Faith consists of something. When you are really operating in faith, if you could see in the spirit what was happening to you, you would see an incredibly blue light emanating from you when you're operating in faith it's the color of blue and it emanates and it's it's a substance okay and that substance can conform anything to anything it's it's, it's an incredible power and now it, when that enfolds you it begins to affect changes deep within us you see Moses was in the presence of the Lord and he was in the Old Covenant. He was in the presence of the Lord for so long and he came down the mountain and his face was shining. All right? There'd been an impartation. He just caught some of what God, of what was coming off the Lord. And it so covered him, so impregnated him, 
It was just shining through the pores in his face. It was just coming there. And that was the old covenant. But you see now, Christ is within us. Christ is within us. You see, what does the scripture say? Christ in you, the hope of what? Where is Christ? What does it produce? The glory of the Lord all through you. Christ in us. And when you believe that, when you know that, and you come before the Lord and start to spend time beholding the Lord, but then seeing, beholding the Lord, not just beholding the Lord externally, beholding the Lord in you. And as you see, and as you think, and as you believe, so it starts to happen. These were the secrets of Enoch. This is how he eventually achieved translation. And it was like, ah, the veils, you see, begin to fall away. And the veil of unbelief is the first one to go. And, um, but there are many veils. As you behold the Lord, the veils start dropping off. And the more that that happens, the clearer the image will become. And the clearer the image becomes, the greater of the manifestation out through you begins to happen. Now, the image clarity has to do with two things. It has to do with the purity of the heart. We talked about that. But it also has to do with what we're talking about now. As you hold that, the veils will start to fall away. And the clearer the image that comes, the more power is released from Christ in you, through you, and it starts to glorify you. That starts to condition you to walk with the Lord. In that kind of presence, it hones all of your spiritual faculties, sharpens them. It begins Transformation begins to get underway the veils, there are many veils. And they're removed, the clearer you see the Lord. Now let me just see this, say this to you. The clarity of the image in the mirror, as it's, show, it's talked about here on that screen, the clarity of the image in the mirror and the level of glory that accompanies it is in direct proportion to the, re, to the removal of the veils and the pu- purity of your heart. In other words... The clarity of the image is determined upon the purity of the heart and the removal of those veils. And the, cl- the clearer the image becomes, the clearer it becomes, the greater flow through you starts to happen. That starts to melt out those veils. There are many, many veils, you know. There can be, sometimes these veils are just concepts we've had from childhood or, or been taught wrong concepts, even been taught in the church, whatever, and they start to break down as that begins to flow through you. Now, if you can get this today, I can guarantee you, you'll be on the road to transformation. And it's like, ah. Oh, as the light in that mirror increases, it begins to dissolve the darkness in you. The purification starts to take place. See, we, God says, look, it's by grace. We always want to do something. But God says, no, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. Just, just do this. Behold me. He guarantees you'll be changed into the same image. That's a guarantee. He tells us that very clearly in the scripture. This is, this is what, if you, if you do, this is going to happen. And it's like, oh. You see, as you begin to love the Lord with all your mind, that is a sanctified mind set apart, your mind starts to become renewed. The veils in there start to get broken off. You know, we have so... Often I see in a person layers of darkness in their mind. They have veils, you know, which keep them out of clarity in the spirit realm. But as you behold the Lord, as you allow this and you keep submitting your mind to the Lord, those veils, the lightness, the light in you, the 
Christ light in you begins to melt those veils. Begins to melt them. And as they melt, clarity, clarity starts to happen. And it's clearer and clearer and clearer. And he's conditioning you, honing all of your faculties to see the kingdom. And to walk in that realm with God. You see, in Matthew chapter 6, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Verse 21 says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be, right? Where it's got your focus, that's where your heart's going to be. Okay, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye be single, your whole body is going to be full of light. Okay? But if your eye be evil, then your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? You can't serve two masters. Either you will hate one, love the other, or love one, hate the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Okay. Single. If you look... The light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, that means focused, single. Your whole body shall be full of light. And if your eye be evil, the whole body is going to be full of darkness. Now what is your eye? The eye gates. What you see, either with your physical eyes or with your imagination. Okay. Where your treasure is, where your heart is, you know, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. The light of the body is the eye. When your eye is single, the whole body shall be full of light. Your focus. An interesting statement, you know. If your eye be single, it says you're guaranteed your body is going to be full of light. If your eye is single to the Lord, your eye is focused. You take, sanctify what you imagine and what you look at. And then you use those same faculties in turning them to the Lord. You're eventually going to end up being full of light. And transformation gets underway from the inside out. Not only that, once these, this thing starts to become clearer, then you can also see such things as angels the realm of the spirit more clearer because we're talking about sharpening the focus now clearing that image getting rid of the veils until you can see walk in that realm you know where God is and if you will keep doing this there comes a point there is a trigger point sometimes it's hard for a while people have real trouble focusing you know and people have real trouble disciplining their lives so that they do this every day. And that's the problem. But there comes a point, if you will persist in coming before the Lord this way, you can persist in beholding the Lord. He says you will be changed. You do this. There comes a point after a while, after doing this for about a whole year, just over a year, there came a point, it was just like a switch was thrown. And it was virtually automatic. My eyes were open to that realm. Now my eyes were open into the early days and that was sovereign. I had to ask the Lord to shut it down because I couldn't handle it. Now I had to learn the principles of how to come back into that. And you see, the church doesn't teach this. The Bible teaches it. But we go over these scriptures and we kind of look at them and say, oh yeah, I know that scripture and if we hold in the Lord, we change into his old image. But we don't do it. So we're not changed. You know, the Apostle Paul knew what he was talking about. He really knew, understood these things. Your eyes single, focused, you see, to the Lord. When your eye is on the world and all the sordid images and concepts and darkness out there it's like that's what's going to be in you that's going to be your inner condition 
You know that word light in verse 22 is used twice. But both words have different meanings. It says the light of the body is the eye. When it says that, the light of the body is the eye, it's a Greek word which just means light. Just light, you know, light. God is light, light. If your focus is single, but it says if you continue with this, then your whole body will become light. And that word light is a different word. It says your whole body will become a lamp. A, a, a holder of the light. And the light, a container for the light to shine through. You see, and that's the whole idea. That you become that. There are many people, you know, who walk the earth like Enoch did and were translated. Many people today. You know, that's what happened on the Mount of trans Transfiguration. Jesus came to that point when he started to be transfigured that something happened and the light on the inside began to come through. Even into his clothes. Listen, the Bible says. He was transfigured. There's only certain kinds of miracles he did after that. He never did before that. But after that, there was a major change in his life. And it says, you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word is the same word, transfigured, by the renewing of your mind. In other words, what you let in here is going to determine how much light you walk in. And the devil knows that. That's why everything today is images around us. Sound, light, colors, images, everywhere. He knows this principle. He knows how it works. Can you see Christ in you? Make that switch from just beholding the Lord to beholding the Lord in you. Activates him in you. You know, <laughs> just trying to think how far we should go and take this. You've got to spend some time. You've got to have time, disciplined time, where you can put at least two hours aside a day. At least two hours. Now, you've got 24 hours in the day. We're all asking for two. Just two out of 24. You say, oh, I'm busy, I'm a mother, I'm, you know, and it's all day and the kids. Look. Why not get up around about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock and spend an hour and a half? Just shake yourself, get, get the tiredness off you. And just put that time aside. The house is quiet. Come before the Lord, start to worship Him. Start to focus on the Lord. Beholding Him, you are changed into the same image. See that image as Christ in you. Not just an external image, but as Christ in you. See that image. Worship him. Worship him. Just be there in his presence. Let a consciousness of the presence build up. Then you lose your focus. You've got to start all over again, come back. But you do it. Come back. Just come back. Worship the Lord. Spend time in his presence. The only other person I know who was in flesh and blood who did this was a man called Walter Butler and he taught me how to come before the Lord and how to do this and it was like that man walked with God like no one I knew in my contemporary times at all that guy really walked with God he was a he was a man of German descent and uh he, he had an incredible walk with God. He, he knew the principles. He really what? Did know the principles. And he would wait on the Lord, get up every night. He'd just, he'd, you know, he'd say, Lord, I'm just coming to keep you company. And he'd sit, just sit, quiet. Then he, after badgering him for about a year, he began to tell me some of the secrets, you know. He began to wear him down, you know. 
you know, how did you do this? How did you get into that? Why did you do this? He said, but there are secrets. And I said, yeah, I know the secrets. <laughs> I know the secrets. <laughs> and he would come to my church and he'd teach, you know, for two or three weeks and just stretch. And I'd come out more frustrated, you know. Because I wondered what this man had. I just wanted it. And uh, he'd say, be patient. I don't, know, I don't want to hear that word, be patient. <laughs> You know, he's the kind of guy, he'd be sitting, praying at night. When he broke through in this, everything changed in his life. The what I've just told you was how he broke through. And he'd be, he told me he was just sitting, waiting on the Lord, and he'd hear, and it was right in the middle of the night, and he'd hear someone walking up the gravel pathway. You know, it's in the middle of the night, and he's thinking, hmm. Somebody's walking up, he hears the door open, closed in the kitchen. Somebody's walking down to where he is, and it's the Lord. The Lord would just sit with him all night. He said, you sat with me and kept me company for a whole year. Now I'm going to sit with you for the rest of your life. He had stuff he never told anyone in his walk and relationship with the Lord. And it's, it's like he'd come out after that time when he broke through into that, the Lord would come every night and they'd sit together and talk. Possible, you see, and he was a very down to earth guy, you know. He was very, he didn't, you know, he was a very down to earth person, but he had this walk with the Lord, you know. And he said, Neville, you will not teach what I have taught you unless you know absolutely from the Lord you can teach this publicly. And last night the Lord came to me and said, I want you to teach this principle. Just this first principle. You know, because preachers, when they're introducing new stuff, get crucified, you know. They really do. Because it's hard. People don't like change. They don't like something that cuts across the average, normal, easy thing. You know. But you can't get into this unless you're going to discipline yourself and bring you and spend the time doing it. You can't. Way of, waiting on God has to become a way of life. And Second Corinthians three eighteen is very clear. It says, "If you will do this, the way I sh- shared with you, if you will do it, change is automatic. It will happen." And the Paul the Apostle said it clearly. And we pass over it all the time. Beholding the Lord. Beholding the Lord. You'll be changed into the same image as what you're beholding. When you not just behold the Lord, but behold the Lord in you, because you see your own reflection in the mirror, but you see the Lord in you, that then is what you are becoming. That's what's becoming. That's what's then starting to happen to you. You see it and you believe it. And the transformation begins uh, to take place within your life. But you know, it has to become a way of life. It has to really become a way of life that, that's, you know, and out of that also you can develop an incredible hearing relationship with the Lord. All of Butler told me he could smell the Lord a long time before even the Lord God came to him. They were talking about an external manifestation. He could actually, he was so sensitive, he could smell the Lord. And he could hear him coming long before he got to where he was. And uh, the sensitivity, <coughs> the conscious presence of the Lord. <coughs> Hones your spiritual faculties. It's in that presence of the Lord that everything is sharpened. See, this is what happened to Joshua. It was in the present, the manifest. The, you, you know, you've got to be aware of that present. After that, when you're aware of that present, the conscious presence of the Lord. If you stay there, slowly but surely, your spiritual faculties will be so sharpened. 
Now, once you get into that, it becomes a way of life because if you let it go, dullness will start again. You know, once you start this, it's a way of life, if you want to maintain it, that is, at least. But it's like you can get a breakthrough. There's a point, if you will do this, there's a point where the Lord becomes so enlarged within you, it's almost like it triggers a switch. I, I can't explain it, but you come to another level. And it's permanent if you maintain the, 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 you know, the art of waiting upon God. Now, you know, it's, it, it's really important that you've got to have quietness. You can't do this if you can hear a phone ring somewhere. You can't do it. And if you're going to do it, you pull all this, pull the phone out of the sockets, you know, and just... And you've got to, if you have children, you can't do it with children around, obviously. You've got to have quietness because the least little thing will shift your focus. That's why I like the middle of the night. It's so quiet and so... But you've got to organize yourself. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to really want this to do it. Waiting on God is the key. But waiting on God is the, in the right way will cause that transformation, that transfiguration process to begin to be enacted within you. You've got to get alone. And you've got to still your mind. You know, it takes time to still your mind. When your mind wanders... You know, we are made in such a way that you can only process one thought at a time. You can't process two thoughts at a time. And um, the only way, other way is to, if your mind wanders, you've got to switch it back. If you're thinking the wrong thought, just think of something else, and you've, that's gone. Because you can't think on two, you can't process two thoughts at a, a, a time. And it takes time to do this, you know? To... to Focus until that stillness comes. And um, <clears throat> we only can have one set of inputs at a time, at least in the thought life. Uh, it's not so with hearing. You know, women can hear multi sounds, multi conversations at the same time. They're so frustrating. <laughs> you know? She can hear the kids what they're talking in that room while she's talking to you in this room. It's a God given ability. You know, and it's like, how many of you know that, that women are different to men? <laughs> the woman has greater peripheral vis vision, you know? She can almost see behind her. She got... <laughs> it's a physical fact. It is an absolute physical fact. You know, it's like, it, it, it's, you know... She can see what you do in any place in the crowded room. She, you know? I tell you, you get a crowded room and a beautiful woman walks in, your wife can see who you're talking to no matter where she is in that room. <laughs> she got peripheral vision, you know? Curves back. You know, it, 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 isn't God ingenious? I mean, you know. It's for the guy's protection. God gave them peripheral vision. Compensate. You can only think one thought at a time, you know. So when your mind wanders off, you turn your mind back to the Lord. Even if you have to do that, dozen times in the one day. doesn't matter. You'll get better at it. But if you get few people who won't give up and they'll start to do this. Oh. Let's be very, very quiet. You know, one of the Hebrew words for meditation means to mutter. That's really quiet. Just talking very, very quiet to the Lord. And Joshua said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mind. Meditate it in a day and night, and you'll have good success. Now, entering the state called the Spirit. You know, it says that John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. What does that mean? John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, 
And then he heard a voice. Heard a voice. This is a, oh, a state or a realm you can enter. You know? John was in the spirit. Heard a voice. Say, come up. He was caught up. Now the New Age have an, a, a word for this called alternate awareness. State of alternate awareness. And uh, they understand it. You know, I want to try and explain this to you. How can I explain this to you? Now, you know, you know brainwave activities. Um, you know, there's ter- ter- various levels. For instance, the beta level, which is about 32 EGC. It's your conscious level, the objective mind. You've, you're alert, conscious, your mind's objective, the brain waves are running at that level. Okay, there is another level below that, comes down to about 14. It's the alpha level. Okay, no time or space limits. That's when you lose track of time and space. Uh, maximum brain energy for learning, but the awareness is different. It's a, almost a subconscious level. It's a subjective mind. That's the level that hypnosis. That's in in un, when a person's under hypnosis, they're in that state. Okay, um, and as you wait on the Lord, you know we have that that um, term. Oh, I got lost in the Lord, and the external sounds faded. All the external attractions have gone, and you've entered a state, you see, and waiting on the Lord. Now, it's, it's like lost in the Lord. John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And um, there are levels which you can pass into. You know, you can come down a level t- into another level, a theta level, which is levels of seven, seven EGs, C's, and... That's like the level of painless surgery. They do this in in China. You know, no anesthetic. They can do heart surgery with it. And it's like they drop to another level. Um, You know, if you come below that to the delta level, which is four, you're unconscious. If you get down one more to down the level, you're dead. But uh, it's like there are levels of awareness which as you focus and as you worship you drop into and it's very hard to explain because it's so subjective but as you focus in upon the Lord and you really start to get into that flow of it and you, uh, you're seeing the Lord in you in his beauty and his glory and that's what you be- you're seeing what he is becoming in you and that change takes place you can drop into another level where you don't have to concentrate to stay there. You're in spirit. And that's the kingdom level where you drop into. It's the realm of spirit. And as you wait, and it takes time to get there, but as you wait, you get into that. Now listen, I mean, some of this might sound very foreign to you, but I'm giving you keys. I'm telling you, if you will do these things, you will change. Things will happen to you. You'll move out. You see, we do everything but wait on God. And it's the most important thing. Yet, we do everything else but that. It's easier for us to pray up a storm, pray, and then go and do what we have to do. Wait on God. It's very and you say, well, I'll get tired if I get up in the middle of the night. Well, for crying out loud, what's more important? You find the Lord, I'll get tired. Come on, get real, you know. But the Bible does say, they that wait upon the Lord shall mine up with wings. You know, T.L. Osborne told me at the height of his ministry, he only needed four hours a day sleep. He was so much in the realm of the Spirit. Just four hours. And he said even that was too much. It's just like that whole, that whole realm, you know. And each level is dependent upon your getting in there. You've got to have a time. You've got to have space where there's real, real quietness for you, you know. And uh, in, out of that quietness... 
you can come before the Lord. Now, this is a real challenge. I find it extremely difficult to do. I thought, well, you just kept telling me, this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Oh, man. I started to do it, and I did it for about a month, and then I fell away. You know, we have the excuse, we're too busy. You know, and then, then I came back to it, and I floundered around all year. And <laughs> Mother the Buchler came back at the end of that year, and I knew what he was going to say. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, Brother Neville, how are you doing? I thought, oh. <laughs> Uh, I thought, oh, but eventually I made it a lifestyle until I'd rather miss a meal than miss this. That's how important it came to me because eventually I broke through into a level of fellowship that I never dreamed was possible with the Lord. And he was the one who taught me how to come into that. And he said, no, don't just see the Lord. That's good. That's a good start. Like we were talking about the other day, you can see the Lord. Come in the throne room, see the Lord. He said, see the Lord in you. And he will enlarge himself within you. See yourself in that mirror. See your own reflection. But see more than that. See his reflection in the mirror in you. As a man thinks, so it will become. Keep worshipping the Lord, begin to keep seeing that, and suddenly something will trigger off on the inside. Enlargement takes place. Your spiritual senses begin to be honed. Sensitivity comes. The image becomes clearer as the veils fall off. Darkness, the darkness in the mind begins to leave as the light begins to penetrate. And it's not from there in, it's from here out kingdom of heaven is within you I never got that you see that was a new perspective to me and that made all of the difference and that's what that scripture says look into the glass as in a glass what do you see in a glass you see your face but he said instead of seeing your face see the Lord in you and the clearer that image becomes that's determined by as the process of purifying you become full of light purifying takes place the image will start to clean up and get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. But the thing is, the question is, do you have the discipline to do that? Or will you give up after three months and say it's not working? You see? Now, how many of you, last, well, where were we, last night? Well, I'm losing track of time. The last time I talked to you, how many of you began to see the Lord with some, with some clarity. Let's see hands. With some cl reasonable clarity. Okay. Okay. That's good. Now, that veil of unbelief. Okay. It's like there's a veil that don't believe. And there's levels to that veil of unbelief. You know, Jesus said, you know, if you believe, you can do anything. And it's an interesting thing, you know, he didn't even qualify it. He just said... That's you shall receive. You know, but we've been talking about the compatibility of character. You see, if, you, if your heart is pure, your asking is going to be very different. And so the two run together. And it's like if you will come before him and take the time. I could tell you some incredible things that happens to me waiting on the Lord like this. Incredible things. Things the Lord will do. I will, after a while, after maybe the first half hour, I start to slip into the spirit. And if I can maintain that, nothing breaks me out of it, and I can, I can stay in there, then I have access to the reality of the kingdom of God. And I might have been asking something the day before from the Lord. And then when I get into this state before the Lord and into the realm of spirit, quite often he said, come, I'll show you now what you asked about. This walk is not abnormal. This is how God intended it to be right from the beginning. This is what Adam had. He had to walk with God. Now he wants to bring us... 
back to that. And it It's not some, just for some mystics far away in some monastery. It's for you. You can access this. There is a way in. I tell you, if you will do this, a whole new world will open up to you. A whole new world of the Spirit. There's no end to it. No, 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 no end to it. I was asking the Lord, you know, about, you know, those like scriptures, he fills everything, heaven and earth, and I was trying to get my mind around this, and I was saying, Lord, what does that really mean? And I was pondering this and pondering this. The next day I was waiting on the Lord, I spent a lot of time just waiting on the Lord, just getting into his presence this way, and, and beholding him, and just dropping into that realm of spirit, and the Lord came to me and he said, come, I'll show you. Out. And I was so far back from the universe and I looked down on the universe and the universe was in the exact shape of the Lord Jesus Christ the entire universe massive but in the exact shape of the, of, of the universe was in his shape then I remember the story about that lady Baxter you know divine revelation of hell yeah. hell in the shape of him. but you know I thought pfft he does fill everything. Fills everything. You see what happens then, because as these veils fall off, particularly the veil of unbelief at various levels, your ability to believe and grasp things grows larger. Much larger. You see, and if God told us some things, we couldn't comprehend them unless his work is done within us. And this enlargement takes place. And God wants us to understand the things of his universe and his creation. They are linked. He wants us to have insight and understanding in these, in these things and, and how they work. Oh, hallelujah. You know, during the millennium there's going to be a university in Jerusalem. And the Lord's going to teach in that university. Is he will teach us of his ways. I've already signed up for astrophysics. <laughs> we touch the just a tiny bit of God, you know. He will teach us. His people are to rule this universe, not just the earth and the millennium. That's just stage one. You've got to graduate beyond that. Oh, I tell you. Will you do it? <laughs> I've heard it said before. I'm trying to get my church staff, you know, I pastored a church with 32 full time members. Trying to get them to do it was hard enough. Never mind. I tell you, we had 32 full time staff and. In the end, I did two things with them. I said, right, I'm going to give you all, your whole lot, staff off two hours a day. And I want to see you, and I want to hear you. I want you to go away and lock yourself in that room, or in a room where you'll be dead quiet. You can't hear anything else in the office. I want you to pray, and I want you to do this. And the other thing we did, I said, and you're going to spend also two hours a day in the gym, physically. You know, our output increased so greatly. <laughs> Unbelievable from the, those people. <laughs> because they were physically fit and they were becoming spiritually fit. They became mandatory, you know, for every per person in there. Uh, and it made a huge difference. But I had to force it on them. I can't force it on you. Okay? 
<laughs> no, I'm not going to pay you to do it either. <laughs> Beholding him as in a glass. You shall be changed from one level to the next level, then to the next level, then to the next level, if you'll do it. Now, out of a congregation this size, we might get just a handful. But if I got just a handful of people who would break through in this, I would be so happy. Because it's like, Oh. Yeah, there's a state I was in the spirit and that can happen sovereignly when you were in a meeting like this and it can happen sovereignly but well, most of the time we have to come into that realm John said he was already there on the Lord's day you see and because he was there and he had access he heard that voice whoa he said come on up You've got to at least sometime during the day be in that state where you're exposed to the realm of God, the anointing, the presence, the glory, if you're going to change to the next thing that God has for you. You know, we all make New Year's resolutions, but they don't last very long. I want to challenge you today. See, ministers don't do this. <laughs> you don't do it. And you know, they want to be in the spirit, but they don't do the things that condition them to enter that realm. Every time you're in the conscious presence of the Lord, changes taking place in you. And your senses, spiritual senses are being honed. It has to be the conscious presence. Okay? You've got to feel his presence. When that's happening, something is taking place. And the other thing that happened to me once I started to do this, and I started to get the hang of really getting in there and staying in there for a while and staying and being in that realm, I found, because God saw my hunger and my desire, when I was out of that, I'd be driving down the road in my car and I feel the anointing, like a shower of rain, you know, come on me, go through me. And I, you know, because we're, we're Pentecostal, they're saying, Lord, who do you want me to pray for, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with that. I said, Lord, what is this? In the most unusual times, I'd get it. He said, I'm conditioning you now. I've seen your heart cry and your hunger. He said, try and maintain that feel as long as, you have, as long as you can because it's conditioning you on the inside to enter into my presence. And this went on for a whole year. I mean, most unusual times of the day this would happen to me, you know. And I'd think, oh, here we are again. Thank you, Lord. Try and keep it on me as long as I, I wouldn't shut my eyes about drying, but keep it there, you know. <laughs> as much as long as I could keep it on me. Because it's power, creative or recreative power going through us, conditioning us. But that didn't happen until I started on this first. And God sees your determination and your hunger. And one of you said to me, he said, Neville, if God really comes to the conclusion that you're not going to give up, other things will be added. But he never told me what they were. But he said other things will be added to that, at that level. Well, if he knows now that you're not going to give up, he said he'll start to add other things to bring you through. And uh, it was like, oh. See, this is different to just like coming to church, hearing a good message, worshiping the Lord. No, that's good and getting understanding. But you know, the whole idea of ministry gifts is to teach you how to come into that walk with the Lord. You know, not just preaching, imparting more and more knowledge, but it's imparting know-how 
on how you can come before the Lord and present yourself. Sometimes, you know, I come before the Lord and the Lord will say, now, stand. And I'll be kneeling. And he'd say, stand. And I'd, I'd, I'd stand. And he'd say, be still. And I'd be still. He wanted to do something special. Other times, other times I had the Lord say to me, walk. And I just walk like this, worshiping the Lord, focusing, worshiping the Lord. But just, you see, He'll teach you how to come before the Lord in certain ways. There's certain things I will only get when I'm kneeling. But He knows what He wants to do with us and what He wants to give us. And there's different. I'm not talking about methods. I'm talking about instructing, being instructed by the Holy Spirit how to come before the Lord. Sometimes he would have me lie before the Lord. You know, and uh, he'd say, no, no, don't lie in your stomach, lie on your back. I thought, this sounds you know, really weird. But when I obeyed him, I tell you, something started to happen. And there were ways to come before the Lord. David talks about this. The ways of, of coming before the Lord, instructing us how to come before the Lord and what to do. And we just become sensitive to that. And uh, it's like learning, finding your way in, and doing it. You've got to set aside a time, a time when it's, it's going to be quiet. And you know, it might take you 12 months before you break through. You know, you'll go to university for three, four, five, six years to learn to be a doctor. Give time, study, come home, study. Now, will we put that kind of time into graduating into his kingdom? How, what's more important? You know? And we want to come to church and the preacher to do it all for us. Lay hands on you and you've got it. But these kinds of things don't come that way. You can give healing, that's another thing. The other things, that's another thing. This can't be imparted. The desire and hunger can be imparted. The knowledge of the way in can come as a revelation and be imparted to you. But only you can do it. Boy, the angels are looking on here today. Listening. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray for a moment. Brad, can you come to the. You know, there are many hidden saints today who move around ministering in the realm of the Spirit to churches unknown and people unknown. And these people can just move, but will, anyway. Walter Butler told me of a story in an airport and he missed his plane. Angel came to me. It wasn't. He didn't have to go far. It was just the next, not very far, but he had to fly. He missed the plane, and he was praying, Lord. You know, those people were waiting for me at the other end, and just began to talk to the Lord. Nothing. The Lord. He, he knew the Lord was just listening to him. He just opened his eyes, and he was there, right at the other end, between praying and opening his eyes. He tra- be transported to the other side very rarely talked about these things but he was always sitting in airports talking to angels as he traveled you know always look I tell you if you do not introduce this realm of reality to this generation you're not going to get them you're not going to keep them kids today want the real thing but you've got to get it first. 
Lord, I pray for every person here today. Lord, you, you know their hearts. You know the heart of every person here. You know their heartaches. You know their fears. You know their longings. And Lord, these people are here today listening to this. I pray that some, some will take hold of this. And with it, find their way into a walk with God they never dreamed was possible. Angels are intently looking at many, many people, looking with intensity at people. I'm quite sure what they're looking for. It requires determination and hunger. Lord, I pray. Lord, just let a spark be kindled in hearts here today. Just kindle something by your spirit in their hearts. Like you first did with me, Lord. Just, it's possible. You can do this. You want to do it, and you can do it. You can walk with God. you focus on you will connect with as you focus on Christ in you it will become a reality after a while conception will happen enlargement will take place there will come a point when that trigger is just thrown and you've been birthed into it pray that you will just release your anointing now just upon people like, to draw them Lord. just to let them know that this is what you want for them let them consciously now feel your presence in a tangible way I pray in Jesus name tangible tangible draw them by your spirit Lord Draw them, draw them, draw them. Lord, by your spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. eyes of the Lord run to and fro, looking, searching, just watching for that spark. Let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you might know, see, know your calling. 
height, the breadth, the depth of it. Father, There are mantles available. There are anointings available. Right here today, there are mantles available. As a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it cannot bring forth much, much fruit, many, many more mantles. And I tell you, the mantle of this man was beautiful. Mantles of that man are here today. It just takes a spark, a desire, an availability, a hunger, commitment. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, you seek those who you determine. It is time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mantles are available. See, the mantle of this man I've been talking about today, Walter Butler, has been offered to you. And if you just choose to accept that, it will be placed upon you and it will disappear as an anointing into you, into your spirit. And it will begin to open up your understanding. It will begin to open up your awareness more and more, particularly your understanding of how to interview. Offers you right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Keith, Paul, Wanda.
You're getting very close to breaking out into a new dimension. Very close. Very close. Both of you. Both of you. I'm just trying to determine if this is the same mantle of Walter Buehler or if it's a different one. I just say, it's, it's, it's the same mantles, but they'll work slightly different. But he's offering you these mantles. And I also say, like, there's a mantle for you that will give you the ability touch people, when you touch them, they'll be conveyed to you um, revelation knowledge, discernment at a very high level. And it'll come through touch and there will be a feeling that goes, physical feeling, touch what goes with it, but the revelation will be related to your spirit. And that's a, a, it's a level a new level. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I look, there are, there are anointings available here today. You just need to reach out in your heart. I can't speak, but I can see other anoint, uh, mantles across this auditorium of this man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And wonder, the Lord's going to raise your awareness to a level of not just seeing in the spirit, but it's seeing with open vision. And it's it's like open vision. It's, Lord, let that be imparted to me, Jesus. Part of Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Any core there are three mantles available to you. There's a joint thing. Three mantles between you. Well, I'll just release them, I pray. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, just let your anointing now flow, flow through this congregation. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, impartation, impartation. Lord, by your spirit, impartation, Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, impartation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Impartations, Lord. Draw them in, Lord, I pray. Draw them in. Let there be an impartation that will pull them, Lord, into this. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, that you might know the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Jesus name. Thoughts and intents. Thoughts and intents. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When something like this happens and mantles, particular particular people, mantles are available, they remain for a while, a few days. And then the offer is the well, it's not so much an offer, but the opportunity is withdrawn. Well, the next few days are important for you. If you will also, some of you will need to fast and pray to activate these mantles. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. In a time of opportunity, in a time when angels are gathered, in a time when the door is open. Kairos time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for every person in this room today. Every person. I lift everyone before you, Lord. Look at them, Lord. Just look at them, Lord. Your people. You know their hearts. You know their desires, their longings, their aspirations. You know them, Lord. You know how long some of them have come before you and just longed and longed for a walk with you. Lord, begin to satisfy that desire. Lord, as they set their hearts to seek you, to begin to satisfy. Some of you have been a long, long time. I want to tell you, the Lord's here today. Satisfy them, Lord. Begin, 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 Lord. Sign your angels to them, Lord. Help them. Help them, Lord. Jesus, help them, Lord. Come on, Lord, help them. They sought you for a long time. It seems like nothing has moved. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Activate those things in them, Lord. Let them be activated. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. service before this but 
There is an opening. There is an opening. God's given you every opportunity He can. If you will obey Him and seek Him, turn to the Lord, everything's here for what you need. Hunger, you got a hunger, 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 long desire, hunger, pull it out of him, pull it out of him. If the resources are opened up, available, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand together, shall we? Okay. Let's just sing just a couple of times. So as the deal. Kind of for what I see an opening, not huge, but I see an opening. Something is cracked open. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. If you get an opening, a cloud of witnesses has more access. Hallelujah. There's going to be such a healing move in this city, you will not believe it. Oh. As the day now, let's see. As the day I did for the waters of my soul, my friend, you alone are my heart's desire. 